Hello everyone, I'm going to share a story with you about a bear called Paddington. When I was growing up in England, my mom had a life-size, uh, about this high, uh, little stuffed bear that used to sit on our landing at home. And um, this story about Paddington Bear was actually inspired um, by a a toy bear that was left alone um, in a, a store in London and the author, Michael Bond, on Christmas Eve in 1956, he felt sorry for this bear and took it home and that inspired him to write this story. Mr. and Mrs. Brown first met Paddington on a railway platform. In fact, that was how he came to have such an unusual name for a bear, for Paddington was the name of the station. The Browns were there to meet their daughter, Judy, who was coming home from school for the holidays. It was a warm summer day and the station was crowded with people on their way to the seaside. Trains were humming, loudspeakers blaring, porters rushing about shouting at one another. And altogether, there was so much noise that Mr. Brown, who saw him first, had to tell his wife several times before she understood. A bear on Paddington Station? Mrs. Brown looked at her husband in amazement don't be silly, Henry. There can't be. Mr. Brown adjusted his glasses. But there is, he insisted. I distinctly saw it. Over there, near the bicycle rack. It was wearing a funny kind of hat. Without waiting for a reply, he caught hold of his wife's arm and pushed her through the crowd, round a trolley laden with chocolate and cups of tea, past a bookstall and through a gap in a pile of suitcases towards the lost property office. There you are, he announced triumphantly, pointing towards a dark corner. I told you so. Mrs. Brown followed the direction of his arm and dimly made out a small, furry object in the shadows. It seemed to be sitting on some kind of suitcase, and around its neck there was a label with some writing on it. The suitcase was old and battered, and on the side, in large letters, were the words, Wanted on Voyage. Mrs. Brown clutched at her husband. Why, Henry, she exclaimed, I believe you are right, after all. It is a bear. She peered at it more closely. It seemed a very unusual kind of bear. It was brown in colour, a rather dirty brown, and it was wearing a most odd-looking hat, with a wide brim, just as Mr. Brown had said. From beneath the brim, two large, round eyes stared back at her. Seeing that something was expected of it, the bear stood up and politely raised its hat, revealing two black ears. Good afternoon, it said, in a small, clear voice. Uh, good afternoon, replied Mr. Brown doubtfully. There was a moment of silence. The bear looked at them inquiringly. Can I help you? Mr. Brown looked rather embarrassed. Well, uh, no, uh, as a matter of fact, we were wondering if we could help you. Mrs. Brown bent down. You're a very small bear, she said. The bear puffed out its chest. I'm a very rare sort of bear, he replied importantly. There aren't many of us left where I come from. And where is that? asked Mrs. Brown. The bear looked round carefully before replying. Dark as Peru. I'm not really supposed to be here at all. I'm a stowaway. A stowaway? Mr. Brown lowered his voice and looked anxiously over his shoulder. He almost expected to see a policeman standing behind him with a notebook and pencil taking everything down. Yes, said the bear, I emigrated, you know. A sad expression came into his eyes. I used to live with my Aunt Lucy in Peru, but she had to go into a home for retired bears. You don't mean to say you've come all the way from South America by yourself, exclaimed Mrs. Brown. The bear nodded. Aunt Lucy always said she wanted me to emigrate when I was old enough. That's why she taught me to speak English. But whatever did you do for food, asked Mr. Brown. You must be starving. Bending down, the bear unlocked the suitcase with a small key, which it also had round its neck, and brought out an almost empty glass jar. I ate marmalade, he said rather proudly. Bears like marmalade, and I lived in a lifeboat. But what are you going to do now, said Mr. Brown. You can't just sit on Paddington Station waiting for something to happen. Oh, I shall be all right, I expect. The bear bent down to do up its case again. As he did so, Mrs. Brown caught a glimpse of the writing on the label. It said simply, Please look after this bear. Thank you. 
And as the story continues, the Browns do indeed look after the bear. They take him in, a stranger from a foreign land, and they give him a home. And that's why this story is special for Christmas. <laughs>